Starting in January 2012, I'll be the host of Hi folks, I'm Scott Martin, host of The Caddy Show on tourplayers.com, where the pros hang out. You told me a story about uh, the Masters one time about the greens. Remember the the board with yeah. the greens in the in the in, in the, the caddy. caddy shack? Yeah. Can you tell tell me about that? Uh, well, yeah. You know, I'd been going there for years, <coughs> and uh, I'd noticed this grids up there with the greens on there, and there was these red dots, and I never paid any attention. And uh, after about the third year there. I saw people writing these red dots in their book, and uh, I went up to the caddy master and said, can I ask you a stupid question? <laughs> I said, what are those red dots up there on those the greens? He says, well, that's Ray's Creek effect on your putts. And he says, if there's any tendencies, they'll break towards the red dots. I said, hmm, okay, I like that. So I started drawing in my books and- Drawing the dots in your yardage book? Drawing the dots in the yardage books, and. Uh, you know, just kind of started paying attention to it a little bit when we were reading greens, and uh, maybe that had something to do with helping Zach Johnson yeah. win the Masters. You know, was that it takes you guys, a little bit? Did you guys win the Masters that year? The first year, you used the dots. Uh, it was right, maybe the first or second year. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe that little tidbit kind of helped. Yeah. Well. You know, spending a lot of time on the practice range in the putty green trying to play golf. You know, you always were hitting these three footers to win the Masters, you know, and it's like you're grinding, you know, and just, and to actually caddy there, it's a dream come true as it is, but to win there, it's even more special. I mean, I get chill bumps just thinking about it <laughs> still. It's been since 07. Uh, you know, it was a, it was a weird, weird week. Uh, you know, Zach's usually kind of a hyper kind of dude. And he had talked to Mo Pickens, his sports uh, sports guy. And Mo was like, you know, just really be calm this week. Walk slow. Do everything slow this week. And, and usually Zach's walking like way ahead of me. And he was calm. He was just walking behind me, like just taking it all in. You know, it was like, <laughs> it was like weird. And we got to play in pretty good we got I think we were in the third to last group on Sunday and we had birdied two and three and uh, after the third hole uh, Zach looked at me and said hey D says try to keep me in the present today and uh, don't let me get ahead of myself I said all right Zach I said don't look at a leaderboard the rest of the day I'll tell you what you need to know let's just stick to our game plan and see what happens so we're sitting around, we're, you know, we're playing around the last day. We get around to, he birdies 13, birdies 14. So now we're doing pretty good. We're like a two shot lead. And he has no idea. And when 15th hole, we're walking down the 15th and uh, my legs are shaking so bad walking down that hill. It's like, when do I tell him? What do I tell him? You know, inside, I'm going, do I tell him now? Do I tell him later? But Your I'm exterior like, I, is all calm. Yeah, I'm like one of these ducks right here. You know, they calm on the outside, but underneath they're patting like hell. That's how I felt. And uh, so we're on 15 green now, and we hear this huge roar. And you can tell it's an eagle, and uh, you can tell it's a tiger eagle just by the roars, mm -hmm. right? So he looked at me, and he goes, anything I need to know? I said, well, you're doing pretty good, Zach. I said, <laughs> I said, you're a couple up right now, but Tiger just made eagle, and we know what he can do. So, you know, let's just stick to our game plan. And uh, <coughs> I'll never forget, we go to 16, and it was a perfect six iron for us. 
And, uh, you know, he wants to, he turns the ball over anyway a little bit, so the pin was back left as usual. And uh, he hit this six iron, and I had the bag picked up on my shoulder. I was all the way off the next tee before that ball even hit the ground. I mean, I'm a slow walker, but I mean, I'm, I'm booking like this, you know. And, Adrenaline's uh, a beautiful adrenaline, thing. Adrenaline, oh, it was awesome. And he made that putt. And um, so now we're three up going to 17. And uh, uh, he had a decent drive and a decent second shot, and he three putted. So now we're only up two, and we get to the 18th tee. And he says, Can I look at the leaderboard yet? And I said, With one hole left, yeah, I think you can go ahead and look at it. So he looked at it and saw he was two up at the time. And uh, Going into 18? Going into 18, and he uh, had a good drive, and he pushed his second shot just a little bit. It stayed just short of that bunker. And uh, pretty easy chip. He says, uh, what, do you like the 60? 60 degree wedge? I said, no, I don't like the 60 degree wedge. I said, take that 54 and just bump it on the green and let it just run down there. We don't want any kind of spin going on here. So he took the 54, he tapped it up to like this. Mm. So I was feeling pretty good about things. <laughs> at that point. So we, we That's go. That's a good club. Yeah, we go into the uh, little hut there where you sign your card, and you know he had kissed his wife and done all this stuff. And we got in there, and he started kind of losing it, crying and being emotional. And I said, Zach, I said, it's not time for that right now. I said, you were only two up, and you got Tiger Woods behind us, and Justin Rose behind us. That could do something good. I said, let's start focusing on a playoff just in case. Let's mm -hmm. keep our emotions in check and there's time for that when we're done. You can cry all you want to. I said, <laughs> I said let's just be prepared just in case something crazy happens. And uh, ended up winning it by two shots. I mean it was what what an experience. Where where were you guys when you when you realized you'd won the tournament? Did, did you wait at the, the hut? Yeah we waited at the, the hut and then they whisked us over to uh, Butler Cabin. Mm -hmm. So I got to hang out in Butler yeah, Cabin. Cool. And uh, the uh, one of the green jackets came up and said, can I do anything for you? And I said, well, yeah. I said, I didn't get the flag, the flag stick on 18. Can somebody go get me the flag stick? Yeah. I just said flag stick. I just meant the flag. Yeah, right. Ten minutes later, they brought me the flag stick, the flag, <laughs> and everything. Okay. So I've got this whole thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's our trophy. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, and uh, I got to hang out in the member reception afterwards and uh had my zoop soup still on yeah. had a buddy with me in, and we go to go in I, my buddy ben lanes with me and he goes uh i said i could zach's caddy we won the masters and i've got a friend with me you know if he can't come in i'm not coming in so he said he can come in so okay. me and my buddy were hanging out nice. and matt got to meet a lot of the members and we saw him unveil this beautiful portrait that they had taken pictures of during the day of Zach kissing the baby, mm -hmm. you know, Zach and Kim and a uh, picture of the clubhouse. And this guy had raced straight from the Augusta National to his photography place, put this thing together, come back wow. and had it and they unveiled it. Wow. All the same day. All the same day. And we were, our whole group was in tears. It yeah. was so emotional yeah. and beautiful. Yeah. And, I just stayed at Zach's last week, and he had it had that picture up there, and it just brought back all the the memories of of that week, and just how how awesome it was. Yeah. Must have been but a, great a funny week. thing was, uh, you know, I got the flag, and about 10:30 at night, we finally leave. Me and my buddy Ben, and we're in the parking lot where you know we park, and he goes, "You know, we got to go down Magnolia Lane as we leave here, don't you?" I said, "Well, hell yeah, we do." <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so I've got the flag hanging out of the rental car, <laughs> the flag stick, and I'm driving down Magnolia Lane and the flag's flapping like this. And we just about get out of there and a cop stops us. And he goes, uh, can I ask you what you're doing with that flag, sir? And I said, yeah, I stole it. What do you think? <laughs> and my buddy is kicking me like this. He goes, you know, you've had a couple of beers tonight. You might want to just... Uh, chill out yeah, here. Yeah. I said, no, I said, I'm Zach's caddy. We just won the, the Masters. And and uh, he said, okay, that's cool. So we're driving, finished the drive through Magnolia Lane, and we're hooting and hollering. <laughs> 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 and, uh, 
flags out there flapping as yeah. we were leaving the Magnolia Lane and went back to the house where we were staying and we just had the biggest party. I mean, it was, it was awesome. Fantastic. What a great yeah. experience. No question. Well, it really wasn't a big strategy because there's, there's three of me can't reach. Uh, we can reach 13. Occasionally we can reach two, but you know, there's, we had mapped out in the practice rounds that week that, okay, Zach, we know this pin, we're going to call A front left. Uh, what number would you like into this pin? And he goes, well, I'd like 65 yards. So I've got my yardage book and I'm writing all these pin numbers. B, what do you want for B? We know that's back left. What do you want for that? 80 yards. So I, we've just got every possible pin uh, written down what we want because a lot of times there you want a full shot anyway so you can just kind of either spin it back or you know do a one hop stop or whatever and we just really had a had it mapped out great and uh, the only one we could have possibly gone for Sunday was 13 and we had that hanging line um, it just it just wasn't worth it for me to go for it. So I had to actually talk him out of going for it and that's just laying it up and you know, par's never a bad score and uh especially when you're leading. So I, I didn't want him to know he was leading at the time. So <laughs> I didn't want to blow it on that hole. I've seen a lot of people blow it on that hole. And uh actually two weeks later I was caddying for Scott Hoke in Savannah, Georgia. And Curtis Strange came up and he says, I wish I had laid up on 13, you know, because he had blown a big lead there. And he says, that was some, some great strategy out there. But, you know, actually it, it was more of a fact that we can't reach him. So we were playing from the fairway to certain numbers just to have, uh, you know, a comfortable wedge yardage in. So they made a big deal out of it, but it was really just because we couldn't reach him, basically.